It's Jerry Cox from Haters TV, and I'm with David Ornstein from The Athletic, started at Haters way back in the day. And tell us where we've just been, David. Well, we've just been witness to one of the most extraordinary matches, surely in football history, certainly of the modern era, as Argentina picked up their first World Cup trophy since 1986 with a jaw-dropping victory over France on penalties. Uh, an atmosphere like you'll rarely see. Um, we have been in the interview mix zone for the best part of two hours where the players walk through after every match here at this tournament um, and you try and grab a quick word with as many as, of them as you can. We uh, have come away with precisely nothing on this occasion. Um, Except for? But we did witness um, some quite interesting scenes because the Argentines came through in celebratory mood, singing, dancing, bouncing, rejoicing, Messi holding the trophy uh, in his hands. Um, we saw some despondent France players as well, Hugo Lloris and Rafael Varane, who spoke to their uh, national media they didn't speak in english yeah. uh, we saw dignitaries left right and center we saw paul pogba um and that's a wrap from the 2022 world cup in qatar bit of sh champagne in your hair as well they were yeah i'm actually they still drawing it around <laughs> it was but um, it was it was extraordinary it's being mm. that up close with messi holding the gold trophy and, mm -hmm. uh, and there we are so look out for that you'll see it on a few socials i think um but the serious business now that begins is the uh, who's going where from mm. this world cup a lot of players have made their name Obviously, we knew about some of them before. The transfer window opens in a few days' time. Um, you're the expert. Come on, tell us. It. We, we did it before, didn't we, in the summer? Yeah. And you were on the nail with so many of them then. <laughs> so no, no, pressure, no pressure, but starting off, Jude Bellingham. Liverpool yeah, well, fans are looking forward to seeing him in red. Is I that going to happen? I think the first thing to say is that this could be a busier January transfer window than those we've seen previously because... Uh, clubs have had a month more than a month to prepare for this which they've never experienced before because normally they're playing matches in this part of the year and um, they've also been able to sort of separate the season into two clear parts yeah they've used this time to strategize assess what they need um, maybe hold negotiations in a way that they couldn't before um, and I would expect to see more deals uh, maybe some that come off the back of the World Cup but not because of the World Cup you don't come and find gems that yeah. you didn't know about before um, I still don't think there's going to be a huge amount of money to spend I still think it would be maybe um, opportunities that occur maybe plans brought forward from the summer maybe emergency situations for yeah, injuries so Arsenal, for example with yeah with, 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 with an injury or clubs who are desperate to fight their way out of relegation trouble or, or push on for, say, Champions League qualification. Um, but more often than not, it will be loans in this period, uh, maybe the odd panic buy, and then summer is when they really plan towards. So you say Jude Bellingham. I do think Jude Bellingham is going to be one that we're focusing more on for the summer with interest, as we've seen, from the likes of Liverpool, Real Madrid, Chelsea, Manchester City. There's only a small number of clubs that can afford Jude Bellingham. If he decides to leave and if Dortmund agree to sell yeah. him, the price yeah. will be high. Um, and so I don't know where he's going to go. I don't definitely know he's going to leave Dortmund because unless the situation is right for him, he's the sort of guy, and with the support of his family who represent him, to stay put. Um, so let's see what the coming months bring. I don't think it's going to be a big one for January because uh, the presumption is that he'll stay with Dortmund until at least the summer. Now, one player who wasn't here at the World Cup, but there's a lot to talk about, especially with Arsenal fans getting excited, is Mudrik, the uh, yeah. Ukrainian winger. Is, is that likely to happen sooner rather than later, do you think? I don't I don't know if it's likely to happen, but it's... There we go, uh, fireworks going uh, off around here. And, and Arsenal will be ho hoping for some fireworks in the transfer market because Mudrik is the player that they want to sign. 21-year-old um, Shakhtar Donetsk and, and Ukraine international winger. They followed him for a long time. He was on their uh, list of potential candidates during the summer transfer window. Um, they looked at Pedro Neto as the priority then. Uh, but now they've turned their focus to Mudrik. And um, uh, they are in talks with... with uh, Shakhtar and with the players' representative, so are other clubs. Shakhtar have publicly said they want 100 million euros. Arsenal won't want to go that high. I don't think any club will. Um, I think the likelihood is that Shakhtar will come down in price when push comes to shove, uh, but they also want to keep hold of him. So it's a tricky situation, um, but Arsenal uh, are trying to do the deal. There are some people you speak to in the industry that think they will get it done, and the Kronkies are backing uh, Edu as technical direct de director and Mikel Arteta as manager to um, make this big final push in yeah. the last six months of the season okay. to, to try and win the title. So, yeah, I think that's a possibility, but I don't know it's going to happen. And Jao Felix is another one that we think might be 
open to leaving Atletico? Yeah, João Felix, as we understand it, will be leaving Atletico Madrid in January. Um, what we need to see is whether it will be on a permanent transfer and how much of, what, 126 million euros that they paid for him is yeah. able to be recouped. Um, or could it be a loan with a high fee and obviously the salary package that comes with it. Um, there is interest in him as we hear from the likes of Paris Saint-Germain. Um, there have been links with sort of Aston Villa and that probably relates to George Mendes bringing yeah. Unai Emery to the club um, and Mendes representing Jao Felix. Um, at, you know, he's a top player, but I think that one we're going to have to wait and see in the, in the coming days and weeks who emerges as contenders for what won't be a cheap deal, however it may come about. Yeah. Now, we know Everton were quite close to getting Kudus, the uh, Ajax player who's been really impressed with Garner here, didn't he? Scored a couple of goals and looked really, really looked the part. Yeah. Uh, are Everton going to go back in or could someone else come in for him? Well, he does want to leave Ajax. Uh, reported in the column that I did on The Athletic that he is firm in his desire um, to make a move because he doesn't feel that Ajax are, are playing him in the position that he would favour, which is a midfield role. They seem to use him as a false nine. His best performances here in Doha were in a midfield position. Um, he is under contract, so Ajax have a lot of strength in that situation. Um, Everton agreed personal terms with him on deadline day in the summer, but Ajax were unwilling to sell. Everton's interest remains, and I'm sure there will be um, admiration from him from a number of clubs. It will all depend on whether Ajax are prepared to do business. Mm. And another player that impressed here, another midfielder, one of my favourites for, for the tournament, Azadine uh, Unaya. Yeah. Unai? Unahi, yeah. Unahi. Yeah. Um, he, looked, he looked the part, didn't he, with Morocco? Brilliant. And he's at Angers in France. Yeah. I mean, a move to a bigger club surely beckons there, doesn't it? I think so. It's a, a midfield trio of, um, of Amrabat, Unahi and also Amala. Amala okay. And Unahi, um, he just signed a contract extension that gives him an extra year until 2026. Uh, however, there were already conversations with clubs, I think, in the Premier League, in the Bundesliga and in La Liga before this tournament about a potential move for him. So it wouldn't surprise me if he was to go. Um, I think Angers um, would be willing if the price was right. right. Yeah. And so that's definitely one to watch because he was extremely impressive. Um, it's not certain, but a January move is definitely possible off the back of this World Cup performance. Another impressive performer, Liverkink, Liver, oh, start again. Liverkovic. Liverkovic? Yep. What my, <laughs> uh, my pronunciations are terrible. Um, but, I mean, the Croatia goalkeeper looks mm. the part. Almost, again, almost joined a couple of clubs. Didn't he? Forest were interested in that. Yes. So Nottingham Forest uh, looked him in the summer. They came close to, I think, agreeing a uh, deal. But in the end after um, they lost their keeper, Bree Samba. Um, they decided to go for a more high profile yeah. uh, number one, and that was Dean Henderson on loan from Man United. Uh, who else looked at Livakovic? Uh, a, a number of clubs in the Premier League. I think Manchester United um, decided not to go forward with the, with the possibility of taking him. They stuck with um, Tom Heaton, and of course brought Martin Dubravka in from Newcastle on loan. And I think Leicester City looked at him as well, but they decided to go with the, the goalkeepers that they had as replacements for Kasper Schmeichel. He's shown himself as a top shot stopper, top penalty shootout yeah, saver. Um, and so no doubt um, Dinamo Zagreb will have some interest in him. I don't think there's too long to go on his contract, so it's not like the price will change massively, even though he's played well here. And uh, certainly one um, that could be on the move. Now, there's one player I do know, I can pronounce his name, Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Everyone wants to know. Any idea? Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is obviously a free agent now, following uh, the termination of his contract with Manchester United by mutual consent. There's an offer on the table from Saudi Arabia. There was one in the summer. I think the club has changed. Uh, it'd be extremely lucrative, but there's no agreement in place. I don't think he's made a decision yet, and I don't think he will until um, you know this Christmas period is perhaps yeah. out of the way. Uh, he'll have presumably some more options as a free agent as opposed to being under contract to Man United and, and maybe the right offers didn't come about in that scenario. But as clubs look towards the Champions League knockout stages, he has ambitions still to play in the Champions League, perhaps some opportunities will arise. That one is definitely going to keep us talking because even though he's, what, 38 years old, um, he hasn't had the best World Cup, uh, it's been a very difficult year for him on and off the pitch and we've got to show respect to that but I think uh, it is still a player who has a lot to offer. And just finally before we sign off here we've got to mention a player who was so instrumental in Argentina winning the World Cup 
Emmy Martinez. Mm. Arsenal had him, let him go. Doesn't look like great business now, does it? Well, I don't know about that. They got a good windfall for him, and these decisions are easier uh, made with hind or said yeah. with hindsight. Arsenal have got Aaron Ramsdale, who's a top yeah. keeper in his own right, and Burn Leno was quite rightly the number one at the time. So sometimes there are sliding doors moments. You know, it's Aston Villa's uh, benefit that they've got him, and and now he's performing heroically and, and they're going to be very proud of him and some people will reflect and say what were you doing Arsenal but Arsenal currently top of the Premier League and not doing too badly themselves his contract situation dictated that either he was going to be given a new one and more opportunities as the first choice keeper or Arsenal should look to cash in they cashed in they got some decent money for him it was probably a situation that suited all parties and all parties seem to be doing okay now so I think it's more a case of wishing well uh, it's a shame for Arsenal, that it didn't work out for him, but that happens in football. And Aston Villa have got a World Cup winner. They have, <laughs> and they're going to be cock a hoop about that. So, uh, yeah, um, fair play to him. Although his reaction to receiving the uh, best goalkeeper trophy was a little bit bizarre. Bit odd, bit odd. Bit odd. But it's been an amazing World Cup, hasn't it? Yep. The stories, the matches, the action. Um, look forward to four years' time in yeah. uh, North America, yeah. Mexico, Canada. Yeah. Yeah, so, what's that going to be like? <laughs> well, different. For Old sure, generations. yeah, Good. and it's going to be harder for a lot of us because of the distances yeah. you have to travel. One of the benefits of this being a one city world cup is that we've been able to get around, see a load of people, see a load of games, see that was my 28th sessions. today. So. Yeah, I've lost count of mine, <laughs> but it's been uh, an experience. It's been a say. blast. Great to see you again, David. Always pleasure. good, Thank and uh, we'll catch much. up soon. Anytime.